All right, got some sub 70 irons to put together, but uh, I'm not putting them together today. He is. Let's go. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm AJ, hope you're having a wonderful day. So this video is gonna be something a little different. We've got Keenan here and we've got a new set of irons that need to get put together. And Keenan is going to be putting his own clubs together today. So this video is all about, we'll call it a novice. Uh, no, no one's ever accused me of being a handyman. So this first time doing it and uh, uh, I'm a beginner. More, so yeah. More than a beginner if that's possible. What we're gonna do in this video is just go through the whole process. I'm just gonna kind of walk through him, complete walk through it completely hands off. He's gonna do all the work, he's gonna do all the cutting, all the prepping, all the sanding, all the measuring. So if these clubs come out strange, it's... Or if the head flies off on the first time I hit them. Yeah. That's, it's on him. <laughs> on. But, uh, but we're gonna try and make sure that doesn't happen, show you exactly what he's doing, why we're doing it, and yeah, I think it'll be a fun little video. So let's get started. All right, so step one, we're gonna be cleaning out all the hosels, just prepping them for uh, getting ready for assembly. So we'll get started with that. Just a little sandpaper dowel on the drill running around the inside of the hosel. Just get out any of the old rust, debris, anything that could be in there like that. Just kind of touch all the walls. That's all you need to do with it. Good. That should work. Okay. Acetone. Here's what ails you. Acetone, yeah. <laughs> Clean project residue, yeah. <laughs> so we got the acetone in the cup there, and Keenan is just going to now clean out all the hosels uh, just with a Q-tip. Just make sure there's no residue of any kind from machining processes that can happen when you have new, you know, new heads like these. So. Yeah, just again, making sure you coat all the, touch all the surfaces. Next step, we are going to move on to the shafts. So we're going to need to prep and cut the shafts. But the first thing we're going to do is just number everything, just so we don't mess up down the road when we're trying to epoxy everything and inadvertently stick the seven iron shaft in the pitching wedge or something like that. So we're just going to label everything just to make it a little easier to start with. So we bought them all raw length, but they're different sizes. So why are they why are they not all the same size if they're all raw length shafts? Right. So we've got these are taper tip shafts to go into these heads, and these are what's known as constant weight. So every one of those shafts there basically weighs the same amount, even though some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. Uh, but they all come at a raw length which is longer than you'd ever play them. And then you basically take them from there and cut them down the amount you want. So for you, you're gonna be playing them an inch longer. So we're gonna cut less off them than say I would for myself yeah. playing them at standard. Okay. So we got key a, a wedge, P wedge, nine iron are all the same length. It looks like right eight. And then, and then it goes ex, you know, accelerating up from there, eight, seven, six, five. All, exactly. Whatever so the longest one will be the five iron. Okay. Yep. Okay, so we're going to number those and then we will start prepping the shaft tips. Okay, so next up, Keenan is going to be measuring these clubs for length. Again, you're playing these at what length? Uh, I'm always uh, one inch over standard length, um, six to long enough ish arms. I'm probably borderline a half inch long or one inch long. I've played one inch long for eight years uh so okay pretty pretty engineered that way to swing those that way i'm gonna keep that way yeah. okay so there's our numbers that's what we're going for there so a 39 inch five iron going down mm -hmm. and then we're doing quarter inch progressions from the nine to the pitching wedge to the a wedge again remembering because we're going to have a grip on the end of it that adds a little extra length so we're going to cut all of these about an eighth of an inch shorter than where the final club is going to be playing Okay. 
Okay, so now Keenan is just putting some little marks on the shaft so he knows how far to prep the tip of the shaft on the sanding belt so we don't go too far and inadvertently have that sticking out past where the ferrule would be. So, all right, next up, we're gonna prep the tips of the shafts. This is gonna be Keenan's first time, I think, using a belt sander. So we'll start with the, belt, with the belt sander and then we'll move on to the cutting wheel next for the shaft length, so. All right, so we've prepped the tip, and now Keenan is going to go all in on this. And he's going to be heart is pounding through my shirt. He's going to be cutting the shafts with the shaft cutter. I've given him a couple pointers. He's going to do great. So we're just going to turn on the dust extractor to make sure we clean out any of the stuff that gets into the air, and uh, we'll go to town. We're going to cut about that's about two inches. We're going to be trimming off each of these shafts. Yeah. So. All right, finger check. One, two, three, four, we got five on that, yeah. Good, good and good. <laughs> 10 fingers, we're good, all right, fantastic. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna be doing, Keenan's gonna be doing before we start assembly with epoxy is we're gonna get some swing weight measurements and, uh, and see what we're working with here. So we've gone through the process, we're just dry fitting everything together. Obviously we're not uh, gluing anything yet, so make sure we don't tip that head over and have it fall on the ground. And then because he's doing this here, and if you've watched enough videos of mine, you know I like to go and do my swing weighting this way. We're gonna put that grip and just rubber band it to the end to mimic what the club will actually feel like in its assembled state. And we're gonna get a swing weight off of that. put it on there he's going to have a little bit of a gap to account for the butt cap on the grip and then we're going to see what we get here D7. D7 and a half, basically. Okay, D7. All right, and then now we know that D7, we can basically just take the grip off, measure it without the grip now, and then just try and match everything off that, whatever this number comes out to be. And it should be about 10 points. Yeah, it's coming out about E8. E8, okay. T7. 
So we're gonna mix up some 24 hour two part epoxy and then we're gonna start putting everything together. Last thing we're going to do before we start mixing it, so don't mix it yet, we're going to get some of these little beads here and open that up and just use the stick and scoop out about three scoops of what will just kind of fit on the last inch of the stick. No, actually just use the stick like a spoon. So whatever kind of gets up on it, if that makes sense, like that, yeah, and just put like three of those in there. These are the shafting beads, just helps to make sure that the shaft is centered in the hosel. So three of those, that's all you need. Mixer up. And then we're just gonna start smooth mixing for about 45 seconds or so. Helps the shaft stay centered in the hosel. Help me out with that. What's that mean? Yeah, so think of them like little ball bearings, basically. So okay. they kind of fill in the gaps around the edges so that ideally it's even on all sides so that you don't get lean one way or the other. Seems like enough, maybe. Okay. It is the nine iron head. You can run. Uh, punch up. We'll go for a little white wire here. Good. Good. That's Perfect. Good enough, yeah. That's all it needs. Okay. Barrel down. As far as I can run on by an inch off. Good. All right. White wire again. Everywhere from here to there. No silver. Exactly. Not too thick, is it? No, I think that's fine. Make sure all that's silver. Let's cut it. Okay. Thanks, so. Oh, Jason? Yep. Okay, support the head. Yes. Head goes down. Right down, shaft oh. in, rotate as you install it. Give it another turn just to, there we go. All right, now we can tap it down and listen for it. There it was. That was it? Mm -hmm. You got a better ear for it than I do, obviously. I'm gonna bring it back up. Now rotate it at least one more 360 degree turn just to make sure that all the epoxy is evenly coated and now you can worry about where your logo is going to be lined up and then we can wipe off our without losing control of the head without losing control of the head here you need me to I find it's usually easier to maybe do a couple wipes sort of at the top of the ferrule down okay and then go back and work kind of around the circumference of the, the ferrule. Yeah, and make sure you get that little top section too because we put that epoxy on for the ferrule so it can leave a little bead up there at the very top. We are gonna have some cleaning to do on all of that. That's, that's how it works. So now we're just wiping everything down with a little bit of grip solvent on a paper towel, just making sure we remove any fingerprints or any smudges or any just stray epoxy that may have ended up, ended up anywhere we don't want it. And now you can just brush off with your finger, just pick it off. Thought we went too far or something. <laughs> Let's see. Probably. Yeah, so right here, if I can go back and clean that up. You've done a little practicing with the turning belt. How are you feeling? I'm glad we didn't have the first couple of trial runs on the camera. I don't think uh, those would have shown too well. Well, we won't even talk about this, but we're going to try it, right? We're getting, these are, this is the real deal. This is, uh, 
tightrope walking without a net. So it's our it's our own clubs too. So we're an incentivized area. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So we're gonna we're gonna try it. You've gotten all the tips I've given you. I think your uh, form is definitely looking pretty good now. So safety glasses on, and we will start with what are we starting with? What's we're right? gonna start with the five iron. All right. Worst case scenario, we'll just hit hard sixes and there uh, easy fours. Who needs a five iron? Yeah. Guess we should turn it on, huh? All right. Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. And what we talked about when we were practicing, the most important thing is when you're turning down ferrules is consistency in your pressure and consistency in rotation speed. That being you want to always keep that head moving. to do a little too too easy on the pressure playing it safe <laughs> but pretty Get consistent good spin yeah uh, happy with that yes the spin looked good the rotation was good the technique looked good seemed like a pretty good run but still probably not very aggressive with the the okay. is my is it getting is it getting flatter, smoother? It's, it's getting pretty close, I'd okay. say. I do think the other thing is I'm I'm living pretty close to the hosel. Right. I'm not really there'll probably be a little work left at the end evening it out a little yeah. you know. Once you get it more or less flat and even with the hosel, then we can go back and just sort of smooth everything out with a light touch. That one felt like a really good run. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's getting pretty close. I'd say I'm still living just pretty close to the edge. Yeah, it's getting close. Another round and maybe don't be afraid to move a little up. Yeah, I would move up a little bit. I would stay shy of the colored yep. blue ring, but anywhere below that, I think that would give you a little easier time getting that last little bit taken off. Close enough? Yeah, I think so. Once we hit the acetone, should be good? I think so. Okay. How's that one look? Near perfect. Near perfect? Wish I had pulled out the pitching work. So it actually uh, went well. <laughs> what is it? This is the nine? This is the seven, actually. Oh, well, I was going to say, we could bend the nine to a pitchy wedge. <laughs> seven might be tough. All right, so now we're just taking a little acetone to the ferrules, put a little shine back on them, and uh, last thing left to do will be to put some grips on, I think. Close up. Right. Looking sharp. Keep the pressure on it so that it can't fly backwards.
all finished. The clubs look, look really good, and we've been hitting them. They seem to work. The heads are staying on. Heads so. are staying on. That's the most important part. Yeah. The, the two things we wanted, heads to stay on and Keenan still having all his fingers. And yeah. so success in both cases. Yeah, so what do you think? What, uh, what did you think was the most challenging part of this process? Uh, forgetting the lingo again, turning down. Turning down the ferals. Turning down the ferals was just, uh, okay. I mean, it just feels like, feels like you can really mess it up and you know watching you like a professional do it the, the touch of it is a is a master class right and it, it I got a lot better at yes it. definitely use a practice club if someone's going to try it it was not the most dangerous part having my finger you know three four feet from the whatever it is bone saw or whatever uh, uh that was that was a rush but I think um I mean turning down the ferals was the hardest part okay. and I've never done the uh air pressure grips right that right was, that's that yeah that's another one and i have to say this this was a little bit harder for some reason the tape that i'm now using the masking tape is a little different from the previous uh iteration of it and or maybe there was like a other force telling me to not put these yellow grips on the club i don't know could, I, could that, have been. <laughs> that's 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 a that's an internal battle that you are waging yeah. so i don't i don't know there you go through the entire process First time basically doing all of it, if we include the grips that he had never put on with compressed air. So just as a demonstration that anyone can do this, not to say that Keenan is underqualified, he's very talented and knows a lot about golf, but this is definitely something if you've never gotten into, if you've never tried it before, it's definitely something you can do. You just need to take your time, have some basic pointers, some fundamentals, and then just kind of you know, have a checklist and go through the process. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video, something a little bit different, not uh, having me building golf clubs, so I enjoyed just sort of sitting back and running the camera. If you did enjoy this video, definitely let me know down in the comments. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you'll be alerted when I post new videos. Please check out my other YouTube channel at Elite Fit Golf, and you can find me on Instagram at Mobile Club Maker, and we will see you on the next video. Take care.